Warm welcome to you from Geneva, Switzerland. This is Reda Sadki from the Geneva Learning Foundation. We are connected to members of the Movement for Immunization Agenda 2030 who are from literally from all over the world, 137 countries in the room today in the movement and 25 seconds until we kick off with this fourth weekly assembly, the one time in the week when everyone in the movement is together. Warm welcome to you. This is Geneva, Switzerland, but connecting participants, immunization professionals from all over the world. I'm here with Charlotte M. Bou. Charlotte, how are you doing? Greta, hi everyone. I'm doing great and it's as always a pleasure to be here today. One important thing, I'm sure some of you will end up watching this assembly, missing the live assembly, which is really an experience, and watching uh, the recording uh, because you missed our messages about the time change in Geneva, but that's okay. Now, we first of all want to start this session by saluting some of those immunization professionals who are doing the critical work or of immunization, and in some cases, no matter how committed and dedicated you are, and I'd like to salute Esther and ask you whatever your beliefs, your convictions, however you express your thoughts and share your thoughts with someone who is ill, I'd like to ask you to do that now and we'd like to offer this applause to encourage you to recover, hope you will recover and that you're getting the care that you need. We want to acknowledge, we received, we read every one of your messages, but there's a number of members of the movement who are currently hospitalized, who are not well. And we'd like uh, to say that our thoughts are with you and you remain a member of the movement, uh, be that as, as, as it may. Now, we also know that many of you, again, uh, Alex here is another example. Alex has been sick, but is still willing to accomplish his situation analysis, which is our current focus. And Alex, really, really, our thoughts that you get well soon, that you're getting the care uh, that you need. And of course, we salute you as a hero for immunization. Now we have, when someone is ill, we don't want to put their full names, but for Temwa Emzen uh, Geza, who says, my country is responding to polio outbreak and I'm taking an active role. It's not possible to spare time for this. Well, Temwa, we've said it before, you do not need to apologize, and I'm glad you have not. But you can see here that uh, when you are responding to a polio outbreak, you are doing the work of Immunization 2030. That is what it is about. Of course, this, this session, this assembly, the activities offered in the context of a full learning cycle, those are to help you to improve how your, your ability to respond. And then the other point we want to make with Charlotte, um, and Charlotte has been suffering herself from connectivity issues. Charlotte, what is your message to members of the movement who are struggling like Nan uh, with electricity shortages? She wrote this message. She took the time and the care to write this message when she only had 8% battery um, and there are issues with connectivity as a result. What are your thoughts uh, as you read messages like this? Yeah, so I really um, get to, to, to respect and honor uh, uh, of that is uh, all of the scholars that take the time to send these messages to us because they are committed to the cause for Immunization Agenda 2030. And it's because of circumstances beyond their control uh, that they are not able to join. And I do understand them so well because I face those challenges constantly. And uh, the, the, uh, uh, what keeps us going is there is something that is changing because of the work we do as far as immunization is concerned. That's the health of our communities, the health of the population. And if you are facing that kind of a challenge of one, the good thing is that recordings of sessions are always available. You can always catch up later on. And that some of, most of the work, you get to do it offline. So you can gather all of your resources and get to work offline when you do, and only come back online when connectivity is better to submit the work you're doing or join us for sessions like this one 
so i'm just saying if you are in this situation we understand you we get you because we have been where you are and we are constantly where you are thank you so much reda thank you uh, charlotte and now we much to our dismay we cannot help uh, fix the electricity or the connectivity but there are some issues, uh, Charlotte, that we can, where we can definitely help. So for Pivaja Collins, for example, let's see if uh, Pivaja is in the room. It uh, doesn't look like it, and I regret this because uh, Pivaja, if you if you listen to the recording, uh, things like invalid password when you want to connect to your dashboard that we can fix. So please join the um, the sessions. So this is the experience sharing session that is taking place tomorrow. I hope that Charlotte has is ready to uh, paste those in. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to try to do it uh, here. And then, uh, of course, the technical support session starts on Wednesday. So if you urgently need, if you're really having a problem like that, come to the experience sharing session, and then we will try to uh, find an experienced scholar uh, to, uh, to, to, to help you, of course. Now, just a reminder for those who are watching, perhaps, or joining. We heard uh, from uh, Ashok Joshi, who is joining this uh, assembly for the very first time. He's been a member of the movement. He explained he was out in the field. What is this about? So we are connected and connecting 43,984 immunization professionals who are active on the immunization platform. Now, this is not only about transmitting information knowledge to you it is also about peer learning learning from each other helping you build connections uh, that can help you support you in the work that you do the geneva learning foundation is offering what we call the full learning cycle it is no longer the 14th of march but we every week we hold this assembly where the entire global community that's uh, connected through this movement through this platform comes together and I want to say right now, the doors are closed. You can no longer join the activities, but you can still join the movement. And in fact, the next exercise of the full learning cycle is going to start on Monday, the 2nd of May. This will be focused on action planning. So for those of you who are doing situation analysis now, you will take what you learn from situation analysis and build the action plan. What, what is the point? What is the, all this about? So what? Well. If you face any of these challenges, this process of the full learning cycle, being connected to each other, sharing experience, sharing what works, what doesn't, when and how, and how to improve the work of immunization against these critical challenges, that is what has brought us together. And that what is what we are doing every week. Uh, now, you can see here on the calendar for the full learning cycle, the uh, first IA 2030 action plan hackathon will, will kick off on the 2nd of May. So right now we're in the middle of situation analysis, which will finish on the 15th of April. We're going to explain really each week we're explaining the different steps. Now, the message for members of the movement is that you can continue and we encourage you to continue to invite your colleagues to join the IA 2030 movement. Tell them what you're gaining, how it's helping you, and then uh, explain that this is really to support your colleagues and you in the, the daily work that you do, bringing in new knowledge, generating ideas, sharing ideas, doing action planning, focusing on actually implementing uh, the uh, the plans that you uh, that you make in order to improve immunization. Now, the amazing thing is that 5,681 immunization professionals accepted uh, the invitation to join the first exercise on situation analysis. And we have a clear timeline here. Remember, we have we are now in the week that ends on the 1st of April. And what happens this week is that you have your first real deadline to be to stay in the running for the situation analysis. If you miss this Friday deadline, you will not be able to go to the next stage, which is peer review, which is actually the best part of the exercise because that is where you get to give and receive feedback and share experience with your colleagues. So again, if you need any help, um, you know that our motto is do not suffer in silence. Uh, we've seen every session that Charlotte does, uh, there's something amazing that happens and that is that a uh, number of individuals who joined, basically pretty much everyone who joins a session, leaves a session knowing more and having solved their problems um, what they did before. We ask you right after this session, you'll receive an email asking you how you are doing. It's important that you answer this because if you don't, we'll assume that you're no longer active in the movement. You just need to click on the green button, click on I am doing fine, 
and then um, there are five optional questions. You can choose to skip these unless something has changed in how you're doing. So actually, I want to uh, tell you uh, and share with you what you told us in the last three weeks about how we are doing as a global community. And we asked you if participation has changed or anything about your social connections, change you as a professional, change your ability to influence the world, change helped your professional practice, or just made you see the world differently. And one thing is certain is that for participants who are answering these questions, it keeps going up. Your perception of how you are doing and what you are gaining keeps improving over each successive week and that is truly amazing and that is to the credit of you of every member of the movement who's been connecting and active in different ways 92.3 percent of you are fine are doing fine some of you you can see a, a significant number 171 have a problem and need help and if you say that then you get the instructions for how you can access help in different ways. And then we'll be honoring people who want to share their experience. But first and foremost, we want to take the pulse of the movement. You answered, of course, questions through the uh, through the survey, through the questionnaire. I'm now going to lower all attendees' hands. Maybe we can tr start with Emmanuel Moussa, a true leader within the scholar community and uh, has been so for a long time. He wasn't able to unmute before the session started. And then if you would like to answer these questions, tell us how you're doing, tell us if you're going to to submit situation analysis before Friday. Tell us then you see some of the other questions. Please do raise your hand. Uh, Emmanuel, Musa, uh, would love to hear from you. I hope your microphone is working now. Yeah, I don't know. Good afternoon or whatever the time is. Reda, can you hear me? Okay, fine, fine. Um, it's actually a pleasure being in this call and then to be the first to speak. Um, how am I doing? I'm doing very great. Um, I'm sure last week there were a lot of mails from Charlotte as a kind of a reminder on meetings and submissions of uh, um, the, the situation analysis so that we could be able to beat time by Friday. And uh, I'm sure I was actually being busy by then along the line, her messages kept coming in as a kind of a reminder, and I had no option than to still work and make sure that I beat up the time for 12, uh, before 12 Geneva time. And uh, that's actually a success to me. It was not an easy task, but then I tried my best and I did. And that's what I'm equally encouraging other scholars. Um, please go through your mails and uh, keep reading and then go through. There, there could be a lot of reminders from the Geneva line and then probably to just check how you are doing. And, and, and ironically, my, my triplets, the two kept chatting me and calling. In fact, a few of them just Samrada from India and the other one from Afghanistan. They kept calling and reminding me, have you submitted your, <laughs> your, yeah. your situation analysis? Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's very great for them and I'm happy for them. So um, I will actually, do, I've submitted my situation and then Saturday, there's going to be a review, which is actually, it's not new to me. And then uh, I, I know how to review. And um, I'm encouraging even others because I did IA 2030. So I know how difficult it is to review. It's writing situation analysis, I'm sure it's just an easy task. But reviewing takes a lot of tax and energy. And then you need to write constructively to the scholar whom you are actually trying to review to. You should be able to make sure that you put inputs to him so that he could be able to understand what what you are really trying to beat up. So so this is one area that we should start working in times. Uh, the, the earlier you start in time, the better, so that you don't cut up at the later time of, of, of the hour. And uh, have you talked to your colleagues and joining the movement? Yes. I'm sure in almost every call in the Geneva Lining, it has always been... This is where my starting point came up. And I'm actually very proud to be a member of the Geneva Learning. And I'm proud to be one of the Nigerian team leads of the Geneva Learning Foundation. I'm sure from here, I have been into so many calls, but this has always been my hope. Um, last Wednesday, we had a session inviting the FGS um, lead, who they are equally launching their Nigerian chapter in Abuja tomorrow. No, on Wednesday on the 30th of the, it's all from the Geneva Learning. 
they have grown from a small group to a very big group, very, very big group with, with support from other agencies. So even in the immunization activities, we should be able to keep forming groups and make sure that we have a plan, a robust plan. And I'm sure we will have people, you have um, and partners that can be able to partner with us and then we'll see where we can head to. So what I need to tell uh, scholars, please do your best, try your best and make sure all your assignments, read your mails, and then don't relent. Whatever is being said you should do, please try and do them in a good time. Thank you very much, Yoda, for giving me the opportunity. Those are wise words indeed, uh, Emmanuel Musa, a true leader in the scholar community and in the Nigerian com scholar community, where currently we're reaching more than 10,000 10, immunization professionals. So let's offer a round of applause, I hope. For those of you who are new, you listened attentively to Emmanuel's words and advice as he has been very successful in a number of um, scholar uh, or Geneva Learning Foundation immunization program initiatives. I want to turn now back to Charlotte, uh, who's going to help us. So the rule is we should have a speaker now who is of a different gender, so a woman from a different country, so any country but uh, other than Nigeria, in order to make sure that we hear voices from all countries. So Charlotte, uh, it's up to you to designate who shall be uh, our next uh, speaker. Okay, thank you very much, Reda. I see there are four hands raised, and I think that uh, three out of them are male, and then there is one female, Oneka Scott, that I think is Nigerian, so I'm actually <laughs> at a loss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go with Oneka. And of course, if you are a woman not from Nigeria, this is your moment. Please uh, raise your uh, uh, raise your hand. Uh, we've come up with this alternating rule, but let's hear from Oneka. And of course, we, we honor uh, the Nigerian community and its many, many strengths. Uh, Onika Scott, the floor is yours. You have four questions. You should answer at least the first two, please. Well, good morning, everyone. From my end of the world, it's morning. I am not Nigerian. I am Guyanese, and I join you from South America. Um, and I'm happy to be here. It, so far, it has been exciting. What was initially exciting for me was that the fact that I am in charge of immunization in my country in maternal and child health and we travel a lot so we travel to forested areas where connection was poor and I found myself getting nervous oh my goodness am I going to miss in the assembly the initial assembly am I going to miss the experience uh, sharing session and then the most miraculous thing happened I received an email from Charlotte twinning me with Asia Jama from Somalia and so I called her, we connected a great deal. It was very meaningful because initially, since I wasn't so tech savvy and there were lots of emails and I had all of this overwhelming feeling as to what do I do, where do I go? Although I was hearing Reda and Charlotte speak many times, she was able to really guide me as to, okay, you go and you ensure that you do X, 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 and we got it through together. Initially, she was my big motivation. And then later on, on Friday, when we had to submit, and we, ha we both had busy schedules because she's doing her master's, I was able to say, Asaya, did you submit? And then we were like, no, we'll do it together. And then we had this excitement to make sure that we, we, we met the deadline, which was amazing because we met the deadline. And then I am rescheduling all of my work activities to ensure that I'm part of the assembly, ensure that I hear the experiences. I'm going online when I'm bored at two, three o'clock in the morning, reading other people's experiences to see if there's anything that we could learn, motivating my team, of course. Um, I think it's really powerful. It, 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 is, it is something that I will take with me because you get to see that there is a bigger umbrella out there. People are doing the same thing you're doing with the same vitality, the same avidity. I am hoping that I will be able to look at some of the situation analysis on Saturday. Of course, definitely, I understand that if people do not look at mine too, I will be probably... Um, not in the stead that we want to be, but some of my colleagues are now feeling my excitement. We do have a lot of other things going on for us, but to be able to reunite under this umbrella for immunization, it, it, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing feeling. And, and that is all I want to share with you today. 
Wow, that is a wonderful testimonial, Annika Scott. I think from Geneva to Guyana and everywhere in between, we owe you a round of applause. The motivation can be heard in your voice and it is authentic. It comes from within. So Charlotte, we've just traveled to Guyana and, and I would love to hear more and hope that that I will be in one of the sessions with you, uh, Annika Scott, and, and learn from uh, your country's experience with immunization. Uh, who shall we hear from next, Charlotte? Uh, right, I think we, can, we shall hear from Kai Puk uh, Biel Chong, uh, whose mic is already unmuted. So over to you, Kai, and please uh, introduce yourself. Yes, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Kai, joining from South Sudan. Uh, sorry and apologies uh, for the miss of uh, some uh, assembly. I was in the field uh, visit with limited internet access. I could not be able to join the, the assembly. Uh, I'll go straight based on these four questions that is given. Uh, the first one, yes, I'm doing fine. I'm good by now. Only that in South Sudan, we have a limited of internet uh, uh, setting. Uh, like now I'm late, uh, I have to stay back in the office and could be able to join the the moment if I leave the office as the work time I was required, I will not be able to join. Uh, concerning number two, yes, uh, I, will, I, will, I will look into it to submit the situation analysis before Friday uh, if uh, the internet allow me to do so. Uh, yes, uh, yes, based on number four, I had been able to sense the, and talk to my colleagues to join the movement. Uh, uh, they are very happy and willing to join the, the movement. Thank you. Over to you. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, Kai Puakiel from South Sudan. Now, remember what we say in the movement. We take care of each other. We heard earlier about members who are ill and our thoughts are with them. We do not forget them. They will, will be welcomed back. We hope they get well soon and we'll be able to continue resume their work for immunization. But if you are having the kinds of problems we can solve, technical problems with the platform, you need advice on uh, how to develop your situation analysis. You do have until Friday, 1st of April. It is not an April Fool's joke. And then between now and Friday, there will be four sessions, two for experience sharing, two for uh, technical support. Now you have one goal before Friday at 23.59. So that's 11.59 p.m. Geneva time. And your goal is to submit your situation analysis in peer grade. Now, if you don't know what we mean by situation analysis, if you don't know what peer grade is, you have some catching up to do, but otherwise you should be okay. I'm going to give you lots of practical advice. We may be going a little bit over time because we had some great testimonials uh, that we heard earlier, but I'm going to do my best to, uh, to keep us on time with Swiss punctuality now. What is the point? You know, this is not a, a university or academic uh, course. It's not a theoretical exercise. The, keep in mind, we provide guidance. We, we show you a particular way to do situation analysis, to do root cause analysis. But ultimately, this is about your challenge. Remember, that was the first question when you applied to join the movement, is what is the problem that you're facing? What is the your most difficult? What is your toughest challenge? And whatever it may be, you know, it's likely to be about the children and families of your country, making sure they're protected from vaccine-preventable diseases. So as you, as you struggle to find time, to carve out the time to do your situation analysis, for those of you who are still in the running, who haven't finished yet, uh, well, keep that in mind. Keep your eyes on the prize. Uh, this is going to help you I can, I believe, and I'm convinced that you can do this with Charlotte. We're doing everything we can. And together as a community, uh, with your twins, with your triplets, uh, you, can do, uh, you can do this and we'll be with you every step of the way. And in fact, in order to encourage you, we want to salute the fact that 125 <laughs> scholars have already submitted their situation analysis in peer grade. And this was before Monday. So here... 
we want, this is our first uh, of two honor rolls that we're sharing today. And you can see here, um, the names, don't panic if you don't see your name right away. Uh, wait until you get the slides. If we've forgotten you, of course, we will add you back in. We'll correct it. Uh, we realize it's important to recognize those who have finished, who actually finished one week early. We did say finish a draft by Friday, and so many of you went ahead and just finished the entire situation analysis. Initially, we thought it would be two weeks. Uh, you know, was a fair amount of time to do, uh, you know, and still a short amount of time for busy professionals. Now, um, back to you. We're going to, with Charlotte, we're going to lower all the hands. And I love hearing that people, Charlotte, people receive your emails and that actually makes a difference, prompts them to, uh, to take action. We can't do it for you, but we're certainly trying to, uh, uh, to show you and to, uh, to, sh to show you the way. Uh, so now we're going to ask for, uh, for um, two questions. Uh, don't forget to introduce yourself, but really, for those of you who've uh, done, uh, who submitted your situation analysis or, or have finished, you just haven't submitted, what have you learned from your situation analysis? Now, I have to tell you, I have seen some situation analyses where people say, this is my situation. What have you found? I have found my situation. So just to be very clear, you need to go further from what you know in order to discover what you don't know and get to the root cause of what you know, the initial diagnosis that you may make, you do need to go further uh, than you uh, than you started out. So, uh, Charlotte, we know who has submitted. So I'd like to ask you to choose. Uh, please raise your hand if you've submitted your situation analysis and you're ready to share one thing that you learned from your situation analysis. And then, you know, in defining the next steps, we say... Don't just do what you usually do, because otherwise your toughest challenge would have been solved a long time ago. Instead, go to the ideas engine and look, find an idea or practice that will inspire you to take a different next step. Uh, Charlotte, over to you. Who uh, will you call on? Okay, I see there's already one person unmuted. Yes, Freda. All right. It's, uh, Anu Oluwapo Raji Philip. Yes. Oh. Okay, wonderful. Good evening. Yes. The floor is yours. Don't forget to introduce yourself and tell us what did you learn from okay. doing situation analysis? Okay, good afternoon. My name is Anula Akparaji Philip from Nigeria. Well, uh, um, the situation that I found out was that people don't come back to complete their COVID-19 vaccine. So, um, after... After the community interview, I interviewed a few people from my local area, and most of them said that they forgot. They forgot the actual date for the next one. So what I've learned um, is that maybe we should go by um, like sending email or, or message to them to remind them so that they can come back so come back for their second dose, their booster. Okay. Thank you. That's amazing. Let's uh, let's have some applause for that. And what I'm showing you, have you looked at the tips and uh, guidance for COVID-19 vaccination that is found in your dashboard? Uh, anu Oluwapo. Yes. Okay, wonderful. So just for those of you, so with the, for those who have not, you see under in your dashboard here, you have download and review the tips and tools for your situation analysis. And there are three cases for which we have worked with the IA2030 working groups to develop three specific guidance notes, demand for vaccination, zero dose, and then the effect of COVID-19 vaccine on routine immunization services. So okay. if you haven't seen those yet, uh, go and look at those. But it sounds like you've actually made a significant finding and already identified next steps. Did you use, did you look at yes. ideas in the ideas engine, Anulu Wapo? Did that help yes. you or inspire you? Yes, I, yes, I did. Because I got that, that um, idea, the one, the solution from the idea engine. Okay, wonderful. That's great to hear, um, uh, Anulu, Anulu Wapo. And have you submitted your, uh, is your name in the honor roll uh, for those who submitted early? The very yes, first name, I Oh, is it? All right. I, I just, 
Yes, uh, indeed. Me, maybe I should check. But yes. No, no, you've done one. it. Okay, wonderful. Okay, <laughs> uh, excellent. Let's hear from thank a, you from at least one more person. Uh, Charlotte, over to you. I see Pamela Oben. Yes, Reda. Uh, if she can unmute. Uh, Pamela, or we could ask uh, Nadia, Nadia Zgenti. Maybe Pamela is having uh, connectivity issues. I see both of them are muted now. Okay. Hello. Um, All right, so let's, let's hear yes, from Pamela, Pamela first. Yeah, and then we'll go to you, Nadia. Hello. Oh, okay. All right, maybe we'll go to... I see Pamela is muted again. All right. Okay, let's uh, let's Hello. Uh, connectivity. I issue. think I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Reda. Thank you very much, Charlotte, for the opportunity to share. Uh this is my first time actually sharing. Um Oben, Pamela, and I am from Cameroon. I actually work in the southwest region of Cameroon. So uh, for my situational analysis, I actually worked on uh, the poor uptake of COVID-19 vaccines amongst healthcare workers. So since the introduction of COVID-19 vaccines in our country, our vaccination coverage has been very low. It has remained far um, below 10%, which is not even up to one third of what is required to attain herd immunity. And one of the main challenges we've had is that healthcare workers have not accepted the vaccine. And for most of the studies that we have been going through, we, we, we feel like it has affected the vaccine uptake of the general population. As most, most studies show that for, uh, vaccination uptake to be good in the population, healthcare workers are supposed to uh, pioneer this at, at this particular um, intervention, but which is not the case in my region, which actually has the lowest vaccination uptake, COVID-19 vaccination uptake in the country. Um, so I, did, I used this to develop my situational analysis and from just some studies that we have had to carry out, the focus group discussions that was pioneered by the scholar group, we saw that so many factors have, accept, have affected this poor uptake of vaccines, including um, the, the healthcare workers not trusting the government, including them not having adequate uh, knowledge on COVID-19 vaccines, including the female healthcare workers being scared that it might affect their um, fertility and their ability to give birth to children. and just also um, distrust in the healthcare system and healthcare workers not thinking that the vaccines are effective and safe enough for them. So we, we think that it's, it was a good opportunity for us to be able to work on that. And from the other studies I was able to, to get, I realized that maybe proper prepare, preparation is necessary to enable success. And in our situation, we were not prepared in the sense that healthcare workers were not adequately informed prior to the vaccines coming. So we see that it's more of um, our the strategy that I was able to get from the ideas engine and also from my the various studies I had to review is also going to focus on sensitizing the healthcare workers with um, not just general sensitization, but adequate messages that are going to be able to use to debunk doubts, um, debunk rumors and controversies, especially those found on, on social media. As many of these healthcare workers said, most of the information they had were not from adequate sources. They were from social media sources. They were from sites that were not scientifically um, acceptable. They were not from the WHO side, they were not from CDC sites. So it's a good opportunity for us while considering carrying out why not a, 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 a social media campaign as one of our strategies, but also not a vaccination campaign this time, but a sensitization campaign that will focus on really um, addressing such messages. So this is what um, I have in mind, and I've already submitted the first Wonderful, Pamela Oben. Uh, let's go to Nadia Zigenti. 
Uh, Nadia, uh, please go ahead. Hello. You see the same two questions. Do, Hello, don't forget to introduce yourself. Uh, hello, I am uh, Nadia Shrendi, I am from Georgia and I work at the National Center for Disease Control and Public Health and I want, first of all, I want to say thank you and uh, ask one question about situation in English. In my country, the most important problem is a low level of COVID-19 vaccination and uh, how I understand, uh, I can also make a uh, student analysis about this. Am I right? I just want to clarify this. Yeah, so the the question, the question for you, Nadia, is in doing your situation analysis, what what have you learned that you did not know or realize before? Because that's the whole point. If the, you do a situation analysis and you just confirm that you already know everything you not need. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, that is fine. Uh, so. I uh, did not... Uh, but I uh, can say uh, I read how people work of promote about uh, second question. I read how people work of promoting vaccination. Uh, um, in their countries, and I will try to use this in my country. Just, but uh, I want uh, uh, to ask you um, this uh, question about uh, uh, COVID-19 vaccination. Can I use this uh, um, area? And, Abs uh, <coughs> absolutely. In <coughs> fact, you will find if you go to your to your learning dashboard, you will find that there is a specific yes, yes. tool mm -hmm. that we've shared uh, to look at to you know, to think through some of the issues involved. So. Uh, as well as some general okay. explain, explanation of what is a, um, a situation analysis. You know, we so thank you, okay. uh, Nadia, thank you. and good luck. I hope to see your name on the honor roll on Monday, and that you will have submitted on time and join your colleagues to uh, to uh, to, uh, to help them. So, uh, in fact, this is the message, Nadia, for for you and others. You should have at least a draft of your situation analysis. Yes, it, I have some notes. Yes, okay, yes. that's good. Mm. But there are probably I some people some in the room or who will watch the recording who don't have that. And so we want to say don't panic. And we have a complete guide to really help you do your situation analysis from start to finish. So we have step-by-step -step guidance, and I'm going to put the link into the chat. You'll find it in the slide deck, which we're going to share with everyone. So if you still need help at this point, and if you haven't seen this guidance yet, we're sharing it with you. Uh, uh, we're sharing it with you today. Second is what we call IA2030 radio. So I'm going to share the link. Um, if you have problems with connectivity, if you have poor connectivity, I strongly encourage you to. Uh, uh, to to subscribe to the radio. It's actually a podcast, but it's just like radio on demand. I'm going to actually show you how to do this. If you follow the link, you will land on this page, and this is Google Podcast, but if you use Apple or Spotify, you can use that too. But Google, I think, is pretty easy to access. They've also got an application you can put on your phone, and you can go. You see, if you don't know how to start writing your situation analysis, you can go and actually listen to the guidance there. Okay, this is a little bit, This I think this is going to be in, in French because uh, I'm scrolling around, but you can actually go here and on your phone. I'm really pleased that you are here because I want to help you you get uh, really a step-by-step -step guidance. Um, now, this is on demand, so you can listen to it on your way to work. Uh, you can listen to it when you're in the field. You can actually download the audio and listen to the clips, and you can do the same with the videos. And then for the experience sharing, um, that is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and the uh, technical support is on Wednesdays and um and Friday. So yes, great to see uh, Dr. Kanika Gupta that you've subscribed to the podcast. Now, I want to uh, take you through, I'm keeping my eye on the clock because I don't want you to leave this session without being having the confidence um, about what you need to do, especially for those of you who've fallen behind and who haven't gotten started yet, okay? So this may be a bit frustrating if you've been through these steps, but again, remember that our movement is about solidarity. So that also means solidarity with people who may not, who may have, who may struggle more than you uh, did to actually figure out how all of this works. So you can see there are five questions, and you'll find these exact five, these same five questions as Emmanuel Musa said. Take your time to read the emails. You should be, uh, you know, you you should you should find find this useful. So, question one is: Have you joined peer grade? And I'd like to, of course, ask you if um, 
Uh, great to hear, Abdurashid, that um, you did. You looked at the step-by-step -step guidance and you say that really made you think more and more. So go ahead and type yes if you have joined peer grade and type no if you haven't. We'll tell you what to do if you haven't yet. Um, if you... You know, if you haven't, okay, yes, no, no, okay, I see some no's, I see a few no's here, mostly yeses, so I appreciate if you're here, if you made the effort, you haven't started situation analysis, but you've made the effort to come here to join the assembly, we want to help you, we want to, we want to make sure you do not get left behind, so where you want to go is to the join peer grade link, I've just posted that, so look in the chat, we'll be sharing the links again uh, in the uh, uh, in Telegram and in your learning dashboard, you'll find everything you need. Now, how do you know if you've joined successfully? Some people ask, well, I'm not sure I did a number of things, but I'm not sure if I did this step. So the question is, have you seen this screen with a green button here? Um, that says next up and assignments. If you have seen this, then you're fine. And I actually want to take time now for the second on the roll of this assembly. And that is 485 people have already joined peer grade. So do not despair if you haven't done it yet. And in fact, I'd like to ask the experienced scholars uh, if you are willing to help someone who hasn't made it yet. Maybe we'll do another matching based on that, where we ask one person who's done it to help another who hasn't. But here are the 485 who've joined. And if you don't see your name right away, don't panic. So we have many four screens actually, quite dense as you can see. And we do salute you if you have already made it through this critical step. You can see 458 scholars have made it. Now, once you've successfully joined for the first time, you're going to need to log back in for two reasons. The first is to submit your actual project. And the second reason is to do perform peer review. This is where you'll be giving feedback to other participants and their situation analysis. Now, here's what you need to do. Second step is to download and read the rubric. So I'm now going to post the link to the second step. If you cannot log in using this link, you need to go all the way back to week one of the movement when we started with the ideas engine and we shared with you the tutorials how to uh, go through this step. So again, type yes if you've done this step, type no if you haven't. Step-by-step -step guidance to write your situation analysis. So that guidance, again, I'm sharing the link again, is the most com complete and let's actually go see what that looks like. So if I go to my learning dashboard and I scroll down here and I look at situation analysis, and I'm going to look at the step-by-step -step guidance here. So it's the last item for week one. Let's see what's actually in this step-by-step -step guidance. All right, so here I'm going to scroll in. Let me get myself out of the way. So you see, first of all, the deadline, the reminder, you can get all in one article, all in the same place. You can get everything you need, the template, the rubric. If you don't know what those are, watch the guidance or listen to it on the podcast. And here, what you get is really, I explain to you step by step everything you need to do for situation analysis. Here is additional guidance you can read and then... Um, for every part of the situation analysis, there is a specific tutorial where I walk you through. I try to really hold your hand thinking through. I cannot do the work for you. I would not even if I could, but uh, I can certainly explain to you the thought process. And so that is step two. Step three is to actually download the Word document, what we call the template, and start filling that in. And I'll give you a tip, uh, which I also share in the step-by-step -step guide, which is that if you are really short on time, just look at the yellow guidance and write your text, do the writing of your situation analysis beneath that. But I also highly recommend that you look at what we call the rubric, which is the key guidance. And then there's many, many other resources, such as an example of a situation analysis. So someone who finished early and submitted something that was not perfect, but you know, quite good uh, situation analysis. You can see has maps, has figures, other things that are really that really help understand the situation and the analysis made by the author. If you want to see that example, please don't copy this example, uh, but uh, you can certainly refer to it. And then also we have a video that shows you the most common mistakes in situation analysis. So just some people submitted too quickly, and it turns out that 
you know, what they submitted is not that, you know, simply cannot be used. We're actually rejecting these situ these submissions because they're not situation analysis. So don't be disappointed or surprised if you thought you were done, but actually uh, it didn't pass the first filter and you get, it will be sent back to you and you'll be asked to refer to the guidance in order to submit something that is uh, decent. Uh, tips and tools for how to analyze situations. Three contexts. And don't worry if you're working on something else. You can still look at these and get some good information. Zero dose, a demand for vaccination, and COVID-19 vaccination. So those are the three contexts where you'll find sort of specialized guidance. And then the last piece of advice is really to check your learning dashboard every day because we are adding new resources uh, to help you. Now, I want to mark a pause. I was worried about the time. We've gotten great tutorials before i tell you about uh, great testimonials before i tell you about peer review i don't think we've had the chance to greet at least a few people online so let me get myself out of the way again hello to robert ninson from the gambia working in south sudan hello to andre ravalitera from madagascar uh, bright health this is greeting from ethiopia Please tell us the city and country. Tell us who you are. And if you want to make comments to anything, so the, any of the things you've heard, you can do it from social media. As you can see, it's actually easier for us to bring in comments from social media. Congratulations to Ap Api Yanteide Franco, who's going to submit situation analysis before Friday. Adam Omar, who says hello to everybody. Um, let's see. Um, greetings to all, says Amel from Saudi Arabia. Adam Omar, I'm doing well and submitted my situation analysis before Friday. Sajad Afis from Pakistan. Adamu Ab Abu Bakr from Bauchi, Nigeria, saying hello, everyone. So, Dr. Adam, thank you for clarifying. You're public health polio technical officer. And you're having problems with Zoom. I'm not sure that's one of the problems that you're going to have to figure out for yourself because we'd like to help you, but even the technical support uh, is in Zoom. JJ, I hope you'll come to tomorrow's um, experience sharing session so we can help you. Sanusi Garba says, uh, good day all is only today able to join Zoom. Really interested. Update my gaps in knowledge. Best on discussion from participants. Thank you, Amel. And Ahmed Danjuma from Nigeria who says, hello all. Vacunando and Familia from Paraguay. Sonia, great. A warm welcome to you all the way from Latin America. Uh, now, let's, let me tell you a little bit. I'll be sharing detailed tutorials in your learning dashboard very soon together with uh, Charlotte and Ja. But basically, in peer review, what are you going to do? Starting on Saturday. Um, so for Mary Nana Ama Adomako, who says... Can I edit situational analysis after submitting? Yes, you can up until the, the uh, Friday uh, deadline. So on, because on Saturday, and, and again, we don't do this just to make it difficult for you. We do this in this case because we need everyone to peer review at the same time. Um, you're going to depend on three other people and three people are going to depend on you for feedback. If your peers do not do their jobs, you will not be able to finish the exercise. If you do not, uh, not do your job, which is to actually do good peer review, give constructive feedback to your colleagues, they will not be able to finish the exercise. So remember with the twins and the triplets, um, some of you were frustrated because you reached out and you didn't hear anything back. The person didn't even take time to say, sorry, I'm not interested or I'm, not, I'm too busy and you just didn't hear anything back. So here with the peer review stage, the reason we're insisting on the Friday, 1st of April deadline, it's not an April Fool's. It's really because for peer review to work, we need you all to be in sync in order so that everyone who has gotten this far can finish the exercise. And remember, as you're struggling with your time, with your calendar, with all your priorities, make sure, you know, if you let down your peers, the three people whose work will be assigned to you on, on Saturday morning, uh, they won't be able to finish uh, the exercise. So I do want to emphasize that and encourage you to, uh, uh, to really pay, uh, think about that. Consider the responsibility we have to each other in this movement. Now, I want to go back. We only have 12 minutes left. 
I want to try to give you some of the, share with you some of the stories uh, from the movement. So this is the Friday question there where we ask you, how are you doing? Um, you do have an option to share a story with us. Let me just see if Ali Machina is here. So this was innovations to create community mobilizers for COVID-19 vaccine. Many of you are concerned with this, so it's unfortunate Ali is not in this assembly with us. Uh, Oneka Scott. So we did hear from uh, uh, Oneka Scott. And here is a very interesting advocacy strategy in some remote communities in Guyana, we've been having vaccine resistance. We held a series of community meetings to reveal the real cause. People just needed the right kind of attention. Some had no reason for being against COVID-19 vaccines. They just needed incentives. We were able to give incentives and had our target go up. Sadly, we had to do the same for the second dose. In other regions, we're still working on getting them. Now, we heard from Oneka Scott from Guyana a little bit earlier. If we had time, I would love to go into it. But Oneka, I would suggest you join. I hope you'll be able to join the uh, experience sharing session uh, tomorrow or Thursday so that you can um, share that experience with Many of you are struggling with COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy. Um, Ahmed Katri, let's see, it'd be lovely to hear from at least one person who's in the room and who hasn't been able to, um, uh, who, who we haven't heard from yet. Let me see, Trebelsi. Um, all right, and we'll be sharing the slide deck as usual so you can look at all of these and uh, and Kikumba. Okay, so we don't have any of the folks who shared stories and that is okay. Uh, the point is they took the time. You'll see, you can read when you go through the slides, you'll see there's some really interesting experiences. Perhaps that can, we hope, the point is, we hope that some of them uh, can help you. Uh, Charlotte, tell us one last time, um, what is happening, what happens on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and how will that help people get their situation analysis done? Hey, thanks so much, Reda. So, you know, the deadline is Friday, 1st of April. So, every day this week up till Friday, we'll be meeting at least once 30 minutes for either sharing of experiences or technical support. But if you're having any issues with understanding how to uh, do your situation analysis, do join us Tuesdays, Thursdays with Dr. Francois Gass and, my, uh, and myself. Tomorrow, Tuesday, it's at uh, 5 uh, p.m. Geneva time. And on Thursday, it's at uh, 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 12 p.m. Geneva time. And uh, for those who have not yet joined peer grade, if you're not able, if the tutorial, after watching the tutorial, you're still having any challenges, join us. Uh, either on Wednesday or Friday. Wednesday is at 4.30 p.m. Geneva time, and Friday is at 1.30 p.m. Geneva time. But we can take a few minutes after the experience sharing uh, session or before, even tomorrow, to help you because we want you to get a head start. We don't want you to delay in, uh, uh, in joining, accessing peer grade, and submitting your situation analysis. Thank you, Reda, over. But remember, do not suffer in silence. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Charlotte. I hope the message is well received. These are uh, especially, I mean, the experience, both are amazing sessions, but the focus of the experience sharing, uh, for those of you who are not able to attend, we've actually compiled, uh, so Francois and Charlotte do this after every session, they compile the challenge and the key takeaways. So basically in one slide, you have a, an idea, something that could help you because it's the, it's the sort of summary of all of the ideas that were shared in response edwin simple from nigeria again i want to honor the challenge owners as we call them jemima quay uh, daniel Equam, who contributed to experience sharing isa tasenbedo and i'm going to ask of course charlotte to see if there's one of the challenge owners in the room that we can go to to actually hear from them what difference it made to participate in the experience sharing fayadumbo oliano from, from guinea oma Omala Thomas from South Sudan, uh, Clement Mukadi from Botswana, Auta Samela, we don't have the country, uh, Yeo Gona from Ivory Coast, and then Gabriel Ngamde Kanjo so from DRC. Are there any Anglophones, uh, Charlotte? That Okay, I see you have. Yeah. You, you're getting really fast, <laughs> Daniel. Uh, <laughs> so, the, Daniel uh, Kwesi, uh, we would love to hear from you uh, what... And it's, the question is very uh, specific, uh, Daniel. Um, what difference? Was it worth your time to come to the experience sharing? What did you get out of it that you're actually going to be able to use to improve your work? Uh, thank you very much. I believe uh, 
uh, per last week per some of the uh, uh, contributions that came from my colleagues. Uh, they were very uh, profitable. And I think uh, one of them, one of my colleagues actually said he needs to get in touch with me so that at least we can work something out because we are having similar challenge. And I think that is one of the key things that uh, really I saw that it is very helpful on this platform. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we yes. also have Clement, uh, Clement Mukadi. So I don't know if... Uh, Sure, I Clement. think we have, yes, we actually have the time. I, I'm pleasantly surprised, okay. Clement Mukadi. Okay. Let me just go to your uh, to your uh, challenge, the challenge you brought to the experience sharing. So you are from Botswana and your challenge was how to reach farmer, farm workers with a booster dose of COVID-19 uh, COVID vaccine in their community. Uh, so Clement, the same question to you. What did you gain, if anything? And it's okay to say you didn't, you know, that it wasn't helpful to you, but how did this sharing your experience, hearing others share their experience in relation to yours. How was that helpful to you, if at all? Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning for everyone. I depend the place you are. Uh, as you showed, my name is Dr. Mukadi Amini Chobi in Kasane, in Botswana. Uh, this forum, actually, uh, I told some of our colleagues, it is not only for vaccine. But actually, it's going to give an intense in, in other programs, uh, preventive programs, not only uh, uh, vaccine related. So, sharing the experience with others and going to engine ideas, I found uh, some of the contributing factors. Uh, even though I could not clear, clearly get a, a straight a, a, a contribution or the factors uh, on the end the point of entry because some of these uh, uh, farmers they are just neighboring uh, countries we have uh, around i think three or four countries uh, sharing the border of the country and this is where we have a problem for of uh, booster dose because we are not sure if these have left the country are they going to come back or not and it brings our target down and it brings our our coverage down uh, as long we are unable to reach this uh, uh, community out. Thank you, Clement uh, Mukadi. So good to hear um, that you joined the experience sharing session, and and you may not find you know the the bright idea that you know that helps you right away. It may be over the course of the coming weeks that you will be having the gaining the insights hearing from others who've heard of your challenge today maybe they'll reach out to you and you know that on our telegram channels you can con con connect with other uh, members in the movement in addition to the triplets now remember the ideas engine well we're not done with the ideas engine yet are we because uh in the last week even though we closed the first round of certification 118 new ideas and practices were shared so again Congratulations, what an amazing community that is working together, sharing ideas and practices. We're beginning to, as we get down to the business of situation analysis, we're really focusing on the work, on your challenges. I can hear it in your voices, that there is something very powerful that is happening. And the point of using the ideas engine is when you do situation analysis, we ask you to map out what are your next steps so if you're going to, if you're tackling your most difficult challenge, if the things that you usually do uh, were going to work, then you would just need to do that. You don't need situation analysis. You don't need to join the movement. But if it's your biggest and toughest challenge, probably the things you usually do have not worked so well. Uh, and so there's a need for fresh ideas. And guess what? You now have access to a unique resource where fresh ideas and practices are crowdsourced from all over the world. They may not be fresh for someone, say, in Pakistan, but maybe for someone in Botswana, you will find something that a colleague in Pakistan has done that is going to help you once you better understand uh, your situation. So we want to, again, uh, honor the... Uh, to the third on the roll, this time by country, uh, to show you the tally so far of ideas and practices as shared by country. For those of you who are just getting to know Immunization Agenda 2030, so there is a strategy that was shared on day one of this uh, of this uh, movement, 
And you should know by now the different strategic priorities. Again, we're not in a formal course teaching you the strategic priorities, but this is the breakdown. And you can see some have more proposals, more ideas and practices being shared than others. And in fact, we want to take a little bit of time to show you what are the 10 most viewed ideas and practices. I'm going to read out the names of the authors here. So Ayuba Balas, Aparna Makwe, Uzodin Mahadir Yeje, Dr. Mohamed Yakubu, Vishesh Kumar, Mike Ansuka, Adiza Ahmed, Benjamin Okpe, Okun Lola, Rot Kangwa, Aurangzeb Mugal. The 10 most commented ideas. So when you have an idea, you can add comments to it and there can be a real dialogue. There's been a real dialogue around some of the ideas. So here we have Vishesh Kumar with the most 15 comments. Ayuba Balas, Professor Becky Tagbo with 12 comments, Pharma Dan, Tuo Samson, Professor Becky Tagbo has two ideas with the most uh, comments. Fundo Gratitude, Hamwa Buhari, Sayed Zai, Arangzeb Mughal. Congratulations to all of you. This shows that your ideas stirred a dialogue. And then you also have the opportunity to give five stars, four stars, three stars uh, to your colleagues for their ideas. And so here again, we have Hawa Buhari, Nasir Tsafe, Umar Tsafe, Vishesh Kumar, Bala, Ganesha Kumar, Dr. Padam Jain, Obong Lamesh, Asma Asgar, Professor Baki Tagbo, Samadan Debaje, and Nasiru Umar, whose ideas are the top in terms of the scores that have been given by your peers. Now, the point, it's not a competition, but it is a cooperation between immunization professionals. And so these are indicators of how interesting uh, we are. And it is actually now six o'clock. So we are going to close here. I see many hands raised. We will not be able to get to get to them. But I do want to reiterate again the uh, situation analysis tomorrow where this dialogue will certainly uh, continue. And we will um, be, you know, and this is a unique opportunity to work with, um, Dr. Francois Gass with Charlotte Mbou. And of course, every day the rest of this week, if you want to. Now, there's nothing mandatory the rest of the week. We ask you to come to the assembly because it is a unique moment when we, you can feel, we can feel that sense of global community working together to improve immunization. But Tuesday to Friday, come if you need help. Come if you want to help others who need help. Come if you have experience that you want to share. Don't feel that you have to come out of obligation or duty. We want you to come because inside you are gaining so much from connecting with others. And do keep your eyes on the prize. The only goal you have before Friday, what, the one thing you want to finish is to submit your situation analysis and peer grade. If it's not entirely clear to you how to do that, well, join us uh, starting tomorrow with the experience uh, sharing. That's it. Remember what is at stake and what you are party to, what you are, you are actively participating in shaping the future of immunization. Immunization Agenda 2030 is a strategy for the, for the entire decade. Your country, every country has said this is the goal. And the goal includes the estimate by WHO that if we achieve the goals of Immunization Agenda 2030. The lives of 50 million children and adults will be potentially saved through this, through the implementation of this strategy. I do want, as you deal with the nitty gritty aspects of logging in and passwords and figuring out what to put into your Word document, never forget this, please. And please continue to get in touch with each other. Do things, uh, you know, where you feel that you are working with your peers, with people who are like-minded, who share the same goals and purpose and the shared aim of improving uh, immunization so that every child, every family is protected from vaccine preventable diseases. Thank you so much. One final round of applause and then some final messages. Sanusi Garba. And uh, let's see who else have we got. Ayuka Charles joining from Kenya. Nasir Umar uh, from Nigeria as well. Wonderful to see so many countries and to hear the voices of so many countries today. Take care.